If there's one reason that we grow our own food, it's for the tomatoes. When they're homegrown, the flavor is unparalleled. I live on a quarter acre urban homestead with my wife Maddie and our dog Gino, and I grow 90% of our veg here in our backyard. This summer I challenged myself to grow a year's supply of tomatoes. So that meant growing enough tomatoes to eat fresh over summer, and a stockpile big enough to get us through to the next season. It was ambitious and it absolutely didn't go to plan. So keep watching as I recap on our eventful tomato season. It all began last August, which feels like a lifetime ago, that we sowed our tomato seeds in our little greenhouse that we built. Tomatoes take a bloody long time to grow. So to maximize the amount of tomatoes you get, you do need to sow your seeds pretty early. So this year we grew six different varieties of tomatoes, some that we'd grown before, like the much loved Tommy Toe, and others that we hadn't ever tried, like San Mazzano's for sauce making. When the seedlings were about six weeks old, we planted them out into our garden beds in our backyard and also planted some in Maddie's Nonna's backyard, which we've been slowly and arduously turning into a veggie patch. It's actually taken forever to kill the lawn and the soil's pretty crap there, so our expectations were pretty low. At this point, the plants really started taking off, which was a blessing, but also a curse because then I had to manage all these sprawling vines that can't support themselves and flop over in the wind. So I tested two different trellising methods. Some I pruned very little and others I trained to grow up a single string. So I was eagerly watching the tomatoes starting to set fruit, thinking about the first caprese salad of the season. And then I noticed something weird was going on and I didn't know it yet, but this was when things started to go wrong. One of the plants in last year's best garden bed was wilting at the tip. I thought maybe I'd tied the string too tight at the base and it was strangling the plant, so I loosened it and figured that was solved. Then it started happening to the plants that I hadn't trained. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no, no! Was this no! gonna end our year's supply of no! tomatoes? My first instinct as an organic gardener was just to throw panic compost at the problem. I put compost at the base and I applied compost tea. And in my desperation, I grew a strange concoction of milk and kimchi juice. Nothing worked. And that's when I knew it was something far more sinister. So it turns out my plants had something called bacterial wilt disease. And there are different soil-borne diseases that can cause tomato wilt. But as the plant was wilting from the top down, I knew that this was the one. Now, I don't know exactly what made the plant susceptible, but it was definitely exacerbated by the wet start to the summer, which kept our heavy clay soil hot and moist. And based on my research, it was clear that the infected plants weren't going to survive. Remove them from your garden immediately or burn them. And so I had to just pull them out. But the tomato season wasn't over yet. And as if by divine intervention, a hero emerged, Nona Vicky. As I mentioned, we planted a bunch of tomatoes in Maddie's grandma's backyard, which is a short drive from our house. And we'd never had a productive summer there and it's been challenging to get it functional. But in the end, Nonna's came through with the goods. No pest pressure and no disease. And we also managed to salvage quite a lot of tomatoes from the disease plants that we pulled out. We hung the whole plant upside down and the fruit continued to ripen as the vine dried out. So in a remarkable turn of events, we ended up with plenty of tomatoes but was it enough for our eight months worth of Posada? In the end, we harvested a total of 70 kilograms or 154 pounds of tomatoes, which left enough to make 48 bottles of Posada. So we've got about a jar and a half per week until next season to use in stews, soups and other things. Not a bad yield from 25 square meters of our humble urban homestead. Firstly, healthy soil is key to healthy plants and disease prevention. And as I mentioned earlier, we have heavy clay soil that struggles to give the roots the air they need to thrive. And after doing some careful research, I'm making some improvements to our soil by adding calcium in the form of gypsum and lime. Gypsum is known as the clay breaker for good reason, but you don't want to add too much as it also contains sulfur. So I'm adding some agricultural lime too, which is made of calcium carbonate. These additions of calcium to the soil will also make more available to the plants, which they need to build strong cell walls. Second learning, 
hedge your bets. If we didn't grow those extra tomato plants, we wouldn't have gotten nearly the same harvest, which would have been very disappointing. And I think this learning is so important for the gardening. The gar <laughs> I think this learning is so important for the gardening. There's so much out of your control. You can't predict what the weather's gonna do, if you're gonna get a bad batch of seeds, or if a new pest is gonna arrive in your backyard. And yes, these challenges can be frustrating, but it's also what makes growing your own food that much more rewarding. It's the blood, sweat, and tears that make our homegrown tomatoes taste so much sweeter. Thanks for watching, and if you've got any tomato wilt tips, I'd love to know. Don't forget to subscribe for more about our urban homestead and our sustainable living journey.